Administration, arguing that it would involve, um, violate the Privacy Act, which is ridiculous because my department deals with this private information all the time. We can imagine the red flag that sent up. So we sent down our own investigators. They went to the homes that the kids listed as their addresses. They found closed down motels, empty RV spaces, and so on. And I fined them a million two, which is the largest fine ever administered by the Department of Education on a school district. Their whole budget, I think, is $4 million, so uh, they're going to learn a lesson from that. Um, we're going through a hearing now. They've appealed it, and we're going through a hearing now. Uh, but I think that fining them for a million two and their whole budget is only $4 million, has sent a message all along the border that people want to beware of charging the state. If they want to educate them for free, that's up to them. But I'm a fiduciary of state money, and that's used for its intended purpose, and that's not for residents of Mexico. What about colleges and universities and HF universities? Yes, the colleges and universities do. And, and we do uh, with adult education. <clears throat> jean -Pierre, uh, it's not all as bleak as you might think. I, I had the opportunity Wednesday to speak to two high school classes in Bayville, 1070. And Joy, who's out walking right now, spoke to a couple others. And you'd be surprised, 60 to 70 percent of those kids support 1070 across the board. Even a couple, three of the ones are real illegal. Okay, they understand that look, their, their parents have been here a long time, etc. So they understand the freeloading and all that was doing to the budget. And they, I was told that. And so it was, it was, I thought I was really in for a mess. You know? <laughs> it turned out not to be so bad. Uh, so I was encouraged by that. The young people seem to have a better grasp, maybe, than the adults. <laughs> I think a lot of the Ann Rose and I went to a meeting Monday night. The guy made a nice presentation on 1070 pros and cons and from the University of Arizona, professor down there. The very next speaker got up and called us Nazis. Anybody who supports this is a Nazi. Or a racist. Yeah. That's yeah. because it's not illegal aliens, it's illegal Democrats. Oh, but yeah. a, but anyway, so we just left. I'm sorry to admit that our time was used up. But that's not for me. Uh, do you have a question in the back? I did. Uh, okay. How much has the, the whole Grant Woods flap, you know, hurt you when you talk about the 11% Republicans? Yeah, that it has hurt because well, I don't think most people remember him, but the title of former Republican Attorney General gives legitimacy to her. Um, so I think that's definitely hurt. What can we do to help you? Beat back that because it's a big group. I mean, in Phoenix, it's that old Symington group, and you know, yeah, they're well, spreading you have, bad uh, things. You have Grant Woods and Sue Gerard and uh, Carolyn Allen, that whole group. Uh, the best thing to do to help me is to contribute to my campaign because I can run ads saying that I'm for 1070 and she's against it, and I think that will bring back uh, some of those Republicans. That's and the best help. You can did you tell everybody here? I mean, he did get stripped of his precinct committee, man, because. Yeah, they took away his vote. He's still yeah. a Christian but he can't vote. Yeah. Uh, but I'm afraid that did more harm than good because it got him more publicity. <coughs> so he said, well, if um, if Thomas Jefferson is running, as the Republican is running against, and he named this actress that's had drugs, what's her name? Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan is running against Lindsay Lohan as a... Uh, as Lindsay Lohan as the Republican, Tom Jefferson as the Republican, doesn't mean I have to vote for Lindsay Lohan. So he got more publicity, you know, it, so it just hurt me more, unfortunately. But it, uh, it was certainly well intentioned to say to precinct committee people, if you're going to be a precinct committee person, you shouldn't be endorsing Democrats. That part of me, despite her feeling self, you are not as attractive. <laughs> <laughs> She's well, looking pretty bad these days. That's why you know, she county well, committees and state committees should wait. If they if wanted to do that, they should have waited until after the election. I yeah. totally agree with you on the impact that that can have. You know, and that's why I kept insisting we're going to endorse it. It's just dangerous. They can run with that in any direction they want. They have anything you can do with Any other questions? Yes? Yeah, I was wondering if the Republicans <coughs> who are against, <coughs> excuse me, 170, are in principle for open borders. Uh, there are there are quite a few people uh, who have that to stance. Yeah, I think you know the the uh, the major effort for open borders and to you know for example to give citizenship to the 11 million that are here um, is, is 11 million no. at least at least. How about 21? Yeah, I I, 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 I I use the most conservative figure because it's bad enough because if they all became citizens. 
they would get to bring their families here, and then 11 million become 45 million, and they would all vote Democratic. So the Democratic Party is trying to get a path to citizenship as a political uh, mechanism, and um, that needs to be um, that needs to be uh, stopped. And, and we, we can't have a path to citizenship um, um, you know, that, that's being pushed really for political reasons. But Mr. Holman, how would you go about trying to curtail this, you know, this uh, path that comes up from the border without passing around the arrival of the city limit, where apparently they have a lot of uh, drug cartels or a lot of drug but that way. I know that sheriff of you right. talked about it recently. It's been in the forefront. How would you go about trying to curtail that that the, that the cartel has seen to take it over in our country? Yes, yes. Sheriff of you, by the way, strongly endorsed me and offered to do whatever he can to help me. Um, the, the solution I talked about earlier, finish the fence, have at least six people every 12 miles, stop people from coming to the country except at the checkpoints where it's controlled. It's, it's these vast areas where there's, there's nothing there. And I've been there where, you know, there isn't even a single fence. There's just what they call uh, Normandy fencing, which are two, two stakes across so it'll stop cars, but any fourth grader can walk around. Um, uh, that's, the, you know, we've got to enforce our, our border. I mean, Israel put up a fence and they total, totally stopped the terrorism as far as I read about there may be some minor events, but it was effective. Um, uh, you know, East Germany put up a, a wall uh, that went uh, 900 miles, I think, that was effective. But that was to keep people from leaving. Yeah. 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 Either way, <laughs> you know, we're the only ones that are so pathetic that we can't effectively guard our, our frontier, and it's ridiculous. It's yeah. political. We need, you know. The, the ability to do it is there, we need to have the will to do it. Try to go the other way. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder around Mexico oh, about yeah. talking about yeah. oppression and see what happens. No. Well, yes. In fact, in Mexico, it's a crime to know about someone being there legally and not to report it. Um, and the mistreatment of the Guatemalans that crossed the Guatemalan border from Mexico is legion. One section, by the way, of our border that works well and I've been there several times as the Yuma Center. That's right. Uh, and, and part of the reason that works so well, in addition to that double fence, is the fact that if you're driving anywhere close to Yuma, you're going to find Border Patrol stations on the U.S. side, almost all the way up to port side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it, it, it deters a lot of folks from coming across that section. Yeah, what happened and if was... we can repeat this across the board... Which well, a lot of it depended on, on political influence. California had a lot of influence. They got a good fence. So now half of all the illegal immigration goes through, um, the, you know, the, the east half of our border, right. where there are these large areas that aren't fenced and that aren't properly guarded. Two things. We need to take away from Tom needs some money. I see one check right here, and I saw my wife write the notes. So oh, that means yeah. thank you. Oh, please put your employer and occupation in your check. Okay, thank you. Um, Got to have that. And if you need some money, folks, this is one of the, this is simply a very, very important. And the gal that's running against him, I should say, the woman who's taking money from the very union that supports a boycott. That's right, the, uh, the, uh, the United. Food and Commercial Workers Union called for a boycott, and she got four thousand dollars from them. And I, which I haven't gotten four thousand dollars from anyone yet. Um, and uh, uh, I called on her to return it because they were calling for a boycott. She refused. Hopefully, she can't. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, uh, no, Tom Horn got no. Tom Horn for AG is the, is, the, is, the, is the check, or the website is Elect Tom Horn. And that's my webmaster back there, Michael Vargas, who's a volunteer campaign manager for him. Sue. Tom, we want to thank you very much for taking time. Thank you.